All right, okay. so we're going into chapter five. Chapter five. This chapter deals entirely with forces. Okay, so we're talking about forces right now, and this gives us a basic idea of kinematic motion along with forces. Newton was a really, really smart guy, and he gave us three force laws. That's what we're going to start with today. So we have Newton's laws of force. First law, anybody know? Law of what? F equals ma. No, that's the second law. What's the first law? F equals minus F. F equals? Sum of all F equals to minus F A. No. I didn't know what to say. We got that on film. Stop it. <laughs> what is the first law? Law of what? Inertia. The law of inertia. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. Okay? Yeah, very good, Spencer. Very good. You guys are getting a free show back there. All right? So, an object at rest will tend to stay at rest. So, if I put this marker up here on the table, it will not move until something comes over and acts upon it. It will just sit there. Okay? Don't screw with the camera. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure it was nice. No, it was just like... They can see only half of me. Okay, now they can see me? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. So this marker will stay up here and not move until a force acts on it. This is also one of those irrational fears that I have as a physicist. Okay, so like certain things really screwed me up. Like the ending of Arrival really screws me up. <laughs> and another thing that really screws me up is the thought of an astronaut traveling through space and they're moving with a constant velocity. Unless anything acts on that astronaut, he or she will continue to travel with a velocity forever, okay? So that's why, like, in all the space astronaut movies, they always have, like, thrusters and stuff. Think of, like, the movie Gravity. So if you're moving in space, you will just continue to move in space forever. I don't know about you guys, but that, like, horrifies me. Okay? I know. It's, a, it's an irrational fear, but we deal with it, okay? Second law. F equals MA. Very good. Second law. Oh, that's mine. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. F equals ma. Now, acceleration is what type of quantity? Vector. It's a vector quantity. Very good. So that means that force is a vector. vector quantity. Very good. Okay? So force is equal to mass times acceleration. So that means that if an object is accelerating, it is experiencing a force. If you are pushing or pulling on an object, that is the definition of a force. If you are pushing or pulling on an object, that means that you are going to accelerate. Okay? So now, let's imagine that I am walking, okay, I'm walking east in our classroom notation to the right, east. Okay? If I speed up, if I speed up, what direction is my acceleration? East. East. Okay? What direction is my force? East. East. It must be in the same direction. The force is in the same direction of the, the acceleration. Okay. Michael, come on up here. Yeah, get up here. We're going to get this on video. It's going to be great. Okay. Cool. So, I'm going to be the force that changes his motion. Okay. So, if he wants to move east, okay, he's not moving right now and he's going to start moving east. Does everybody agree that he's going to have to experience an acceleration? Yeah. So I'm going to have to push him. Which direction am I going to push him? East. East. So I'm going to push him this way to get him to start moving. Okay? Now come back. Come back. Now let's say he's walking toward me. Okay, so that he's an easy killer. Easy. <laughs> let's say he's walking toward me and I want to slow him down. Okay, so he's walking toward me and I want to slow him down. What direction is his acceleration if he's going to be slowing down? East. East, okay? So when he's walking toward me, if I put my hand on him, I'm pushing east. His acceleration is east because he's slowing down. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Sir. Positive reinforcement, right? Okay. Third law. Third law is the one that gives everybody a ton of problems. This is the action reaction law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. He's very excited. He knows what's going on today. Okay? So that means that if I punch this whiteboard, 
What's the whiteboard going to do to me? Punch, punch back. back. Punch back, okay? But now they've got to be careful there. It's equal and opposite. Equal and opposite. So if I punch this with 50 newtons, newton is the measure of force. We're going to go over that in a second. If I punch this with 50 newtons, then the board's going to punch me back with negative 50, 50. 50 newtons. It would be in the opposite direction. Very good. Or we could just say 50 newtons in the opposite direction. Okay? If I hit this with 1,000 newtons, it's going to hit me back with negative, negative 1,000 newtons or 1,000 newtons in the opposite direction. Okay. Now, this leads to a problem, something that everybody gets wrong over and over again, and it drives me crazy. Let's say we have a car. There's my beautiful car. I know, my drawings are good. Thank you for the positive reinforcement. I really appreciate that. We have a car traveling with some velocity. We have a bug. Be quiet. There's my bug. And the bug is traveling to the left with some velocity. Okay? The car and the bug are going to have an impact. They're going to hit each other. Okay? So now I want you guys to tell me the force of the car on the bug. Notice my notation here. The force car on with an arrow bug versus the force of the bug on the car. <clears throat> How do those two forces compare? They're equal, and opposite. They're equal and opposite. Very good. Okay. So the force of the car on the bug is the same as the bug on the car. But your brain doesn't like that. And a lot of times students will say, well, wait a minute. The car is going to hit the bug much harder than the bug is going to hit the car. But we just got done talking about action-reaction. We just got done talking about action-reaction. We know we can't violate this. The forces must be equal and opposite. So why is it that the bug goes curse flat and the car keeps going forward? The mass. The mass. Very good. Okay? Let's go back to Newton's second law. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. For the car on the bug, so this is the force that the bug feels. The bug has a very, very small mass. The car, however, has a very is big that mass. Works? What? Is that how that works? That's how that works. This is very scientific up here, all right? Now that means that the bug's acceleration is going to be large. very large. And that means that the acceleration on the car is going to be small. Small. very small. <clears throat> right. Have you ever hit a bug that was so big, like you felt it in the car? Like your, like your whole body kind of shakes a little bit, and you're like, ooh, that was a juicy one. No. Right? No? <laughs> no? <laughs> that is what's happening there. That's what's happening there. The bug's body can only handle so much acceleration. That's why the bug turns inside out and goes for squish. Okay? You guys ever heard the phrase, it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop? Mm -hmm. We're very fragile, guys. We are very, very fragile in terms of human beings. We're basically sacks of meat, mostly made up of water. We cannot take a rapid acceleration change without basically bursting like a pimple, which is awful to think about. That's why when you're in your car, you have seat belts, you have airbags, you have all of these things designed to bring you to rest over a longer period of time so you don't experience such a rapid acceleration. A big acceleration will kill you. Okay? It's too much for your body to handle. Small little acceleration, not that big a deal. The car doesn't feel much. But if this wasn't a bug, if this was a deer, a deer has a bigger mass, right? And so the car is going to experience more damage because now the acceleration is going to get bigger because the mass of the deer gets bigger. Okay? Everybody all right with that? One more thing to go with action-reaction. Everybody agrees, okay, I may not be the height of physical specimen, but everybody agrees that if I were to just come up here and just punch a student in the face, with all due respect, I could do some damage, right? Does everybody agree with me that if I just haul off and punch a student in the face, I could do some serious damage? Yeah. yeah all right? Yeah.
that Mike Tyson? Oh my god. <laughs> you guys heard the John Oliver joke the other week, right? Where they had a statue of Rocky, and they said this statue represents the fact that the most important thing in this city's history is a fictional character. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And then they unveiled Stephen Colbert. Not very impressive, right? I don't know, I'm very yeah, I'm getting winded up here. So why is it, why is it that I'm punching this tissue with all I got, and I'm not really doing anything? The tissue's just had more training than it. The tissue has had more training than Mr. Stein. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Why is it appearing like I'm not doing anything? Spencer. It's got low mass that has something to do with it. Because it's moving after you hit it. Ah, it's moving after I hit it. Okay, it's not like a stable object the way the wall is, right? If you're ever going to punch something when you get really pissed off playing video games, don't pick a wall, all right? Pick a pillow. Yeah. I'm speaking from personal experience. I hold off and hit a wall one time, and that was the dumbest thing I did. As a physics teacher, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> hit a pillow, okay? Something soft, okay? bucket of jello or something, but like, don't, yes, just a bucket of jello right by me while I play a video game. I just keep what on the computer. Computer. Should we make the bucket of jello before or after we play? Depending on the game before, alright, <laughs> depending on, if you know you're going to play something obnoxious, like say The Witcher 3 on hard mode, okay. then you have the bucket of jello on hand, okay? You are limited by action reaction. The tissue can only supply so much force back. So that means that no matter how hard you could punch in other situations, if the tissue could only punch back with five newtons of force, that means that you could only punch it with five newtons of force. You can't violate action reaction. Is everybody okay? Uh, about this stupid question, where's the rest go? Where's the rest go? Yeah. Just nowhere. Uh, okay. You're not applying force to anything. Air all around. It's energy lost. Okay? You ain't doing squat. Everybody okay with that? Cool. I'm going to erase the board real quick and we're just going to keep going. Am I still recording back there, Wasserman? Uh, the red light's on. The red light's on? Okay, let's go with yes. All right. That sounds good. Let's do a couple of examples to get used to calculating forces. Are we sure the red light's on? I'm not crazy. Okay. All right, let's make a check. Now, first off, red lights on this mini, not crazy first off, force is a vector quantity, so that means that we're going to be breaking forces down into x and y components. Okay, so just like we've been doing before, <coughs> excuse me, just like we've been doing before, we're going to break forces down into x and y components, just as we did with velocities, accelerations, etc. Okay, <coughs> quick example. We have a 5 kilogram mass. We are going to apply a force of 30 newtons. And let's assume that it's on a frictionless table. Friction is going to come in on the next chapter. So we're on a frictionless table. We're applying 30 newtons of force parallel to the surface. And we have a mass of 5 kilograms. If we want to find the acceleration of the system, we know from Newton's second law that force is equal to mass times acceleration, correct? So F equals MA. The force is how many Newtons? 30. 30 Newtons. The mass is 5 kilograms. So our acceleration is what? 6 meters per second squared. So that means that while you are applying this force of 30 Newtons, this object is accelerated. So it's speeding up at a rate of 6 meters per second squared. 6 meters per second every second. Everybody okay with that? All right. Just to check the units real quick, we have a Newton, which is big N. That is equal to a kilogram times a meter per second squared. The Newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. Okay? Now weight, we got to be careful.
They're going to use words interchangeably in this chapter. They might say the weight of an object or the object's force of gravity, or they might just say a 40 Newton object. When we get onto a scale, we measure an object's weight. We are not measuring its mass. Now, in America, because we're silly, you step onto a scale and it gives you a reading in what? Pounds. Pounds. Pounds is a measure of force. It is not a measure of mass. Anybody know what the unit of mass is for the imperial system? Kilogram. No, kilogram is for the... Gram. Oh, wait, you told us this. I did oh. tell you this. Gram. Nope. It something gram. Weird. If it ain't kilogram, it ain't gram. <laughs> no, yeah, that something. makes sense, right, Richard? There's something weird. A liter. <clears throat> not liter. Go. It's a slug. Yeah, yeah it's, a slug. it's a slug. You just made that up. It's not real, though. Yeah, I, I just made it up. Yeah, very good. Very good. I'm, I'm that good. All right. So we have the weight. That is the measure of the force of gravity. So Fg, weight is the force of gravity on an object. That is equal to the mass of the object times our g constant. What's the acceleration that we use for gravity? 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay? So that would mean that for an object, with a mass of 10 kilograms, an object with a mass of 10 kilograms, the force of gravity on the object, 10 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared, force of gravity is 98 newtons. <clears throat> now I'm telling you right now, be careful on the problems this chapter. They love to go back and forth between weight and mass. So they might say a five kilogram object. Five kilograms is the mass of the object. If they say a hundred Newton object, that means that's the weight, the force of gravity on the object, and you have to find the mass. Spencer. Uh, is it not going to be negative? Ah, the direction right now, I know that the force of gravity is down, so I'm not going to include the minus sign. Okay. When we start getting into something called free body diagrams, I will include the minus and sign at the very end. Yep. Are you all triggered a little bit? Yeah. yeah. All right. what? Are we going to be okay? Yeah. All right. Now, the normal force. For the love of God, don't say natural force. I don't know where this came from, but like the past three years, whenever we talk about the normal force, somebody says natural force. And I just want to slap them. I have no idea where that came from. Like somebody was out watching an episode of Nova or something, and all of a sudden, natural force became a thing. The normal force is a support force. So if we go back to the argument of me having a marker, if I put this marker up on the table, you guys know that the force of gravity is acting on that marker, correct? It's trying to bring the marker down. But the marker is not moving. So the force of gravity is being balanced out by something else, the force from the table on the marker. That is known as the normal force. It is perpendicular to the surface of contact, okay? And it is directed upward in this case. So if I have an object, we know that that object has a force of gravity, and that force of gravity is acting down, okay? This is an example of a free body diagram. I'm drawing in all the forces acting on my object. My object is this little dot right here representing the box. The force of gravity is acting down. I'm going to be really obnoxious all year because I'm going to ask you guys, is this block falling through the floor? No. no. Is it levitating upwards? No. no. So that must mean that this force of gravity is being balanced out by something. And what's balancing it out is the normal force. So in this case, the normal force has to be equal to the force of gravity, otherwise you would have an unbalanced force. If I brought Michael back up here, and I'm not going to, if I brought Michael back up here, and I pushed from one side, and Tallman pushed from the other side, and both of our forces were equal, would Michael move? No. No. If Tallman started to push more, okay, let's say I, he got really mad at me because I decided to disparage against St. Ronald Reagan, okay? I'm allowed to make that joke. Come on, let's have fun. Let's have fun. He would push me with more force, and we would start to move in this direction, correct? If I pushed back with more force, let's say he attacked Jimmy Carter, and I, oh, I got real mad about that. Now I would push him, and we'd start moving in the opposite direction, okay? Does that make sense? Cool. Politics in the middle of physics class, very fun. 
Now there's this idea of the net force. The net force is the total force. The net force is the total force. In this case, the net force in the y direction, since these two guys are equal and opposite, Zero. what's the net force in the y direction? Zero. Zero. Everybody okay with that? Cool. Take a second to finish writing that. I have a question. I have an answer. Um, are you okay if you call it like the perpendicular force so you can mark it? Yes, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Remember, this normal force has to be perpendicular to your surface of contact. That will be huge in the next couple chapters. Okay? That will be huge. Alright. So, moving on. This gets into an example happy chapter. We're going to erase this and we're going to do an example. Yay. Yay, examples. I'll put the example up on the board and then I'm going to turn you guys loose and we're going to solve it a couple of different ways. So we have a 10 kilogram mass. <coughs> it is attached over a massless, frictionless pulley of 5 kilograms. So we have a 10 kilogram mass, we have a 5 kilogram mass, and this is a frictionless surface. Okay? I want you guys to find the acceleration of the system. Now I'm going to give you guys some hints before I turn you loose on this. I could have been a jerk and said find the acceleration of the 5 kilogram mass. But if the 5 kilogram mass is falling with some acceleration, how does that compare to the acceleration of the 10 kilogram mass? They're attached by a string. The accelerations have to be the same because they're attached by a spring. Uh, spring? String. They're attached by a string. So that means that the 5 kilogram mass is going to fall with an acceleration. The 10 kilogram mass is going to move to the right with an acceleration. Does everybody agree that it makes sense that the 5 kilogram mass falls? Yes. There's no other force acting on the 10 kilogram mass, correct? So the 10 kilogram mass is not going to go shooting off in the other direction unless somebody came over here and started pulling on it, right? So the 5 kilogram mass is going to go down, the 10 kilogram mass is going to go right, okay? The best way to handle this problem is to attack it by using free body diagrams. Attack it using free body diagrams. So the free body diagram up here, I've already kind of started it. We have some force pulling us to the right. We have the force of gravity down for the 10 kilogram mass, force of gravity. Then we have the normal force acting up. Do I need to worry about the normal force or the force of gravity for the 10 kilogram mass? No. no, because there's no motion along the y direction for the 10 kilogram mass. The 10 kilogram mass is only going to move left or right, and we all agree it's going to move right. For the 5 kilogram mass, What's the force acting on it, trying to pull it down? Force of gravity. Force of gravity, right? Now here's where things start to get rough. This guy right here represents the string. The string is pulling up on the 5 kilogram mass a little bit. And it's got some force known as tension right here. We don't know what that is. We don't know what that is. It's the same string over here on the 10 kilogram mass, right? So that means that there's also a tension right there, okay? So this is where I'm going to turn you guys loose a little bit. You know that the net force must be equal to the mass times the acceleration, okay? All force is equal to mass times acceleration, so the net force must be equal to mass times acceleration. Are these two guys balanced on the 5 kilogram mass? No. No. Is this balanced by anything? No. no. No, not the tension. There's nothing else on the other side, right? <laughs> Only in that direction. In the y direction, it's balanced, though, right? In the y direction, it's balanced. But in the x direction, it's not. So take a minute and try to see if you can figure out the acceleration from here. If you struggle with this, that's okay. I've got like three other ways of doing this problem. And one of them is really, really easy. 
So try this right now. See if you can try to logic your way through the acceleration. Well, I drink my coffee. What is I know what you're talking still recording, Wasserman? Um, the red dot is still on. Um, red dot is still on. Good. No, it's moving. No, we're good. Keep them running. This gives them time to work on the problem, too. If they're good students. That's your force. Yeah, but you can round it. You What? For this problem, we can round um, gravity to 10, right? No, 9.8. Nerd. We're using math. big people math now. No. We did it last year. All right. With a 9, whatever, 9.8. Big leagues. 49. You're in the 49. big leagues now. Yeah, it comes out to a nice round number. Right. Okay, try that for a second. Yeah, 49. That's up. That's what I got. You're, you're 16. Any speed? 10 plus 5. All right. For the top of the center. 3, 3, something. One second, how do you explain that? Um, all right. Math. Yeah. Math. 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 Yeah, yeah, but the tensions cancel out on each other. One tension is going to be the other. They cancel out, they're going in different directions. Yeah, dude. We had one drop, and the other one's going to be turning around. Do you understand? If I pull your arm here, your arm is going to be going back on my arm. It works out. But if you, oh my god, straight down, I don't care. Ben's right, he's just explaining it really big. Exactly. Okay, so understand the tensions are. What? Then you gotta figure out what the, what the mass is. So how do you know? How do you know? Mm -hmm. All the mass. All the mass. So you find A, so you divide 49 by 15. I got 49 by 15. Is that wrong? That's right. What do you get? For what you say. That's what I got. I know it. You should know who you're a teacher. I'm not mad. You hear that? You're just going wrong. The string is okay. <laughs> I set up two net force equations. The net force on the 10 kilogram mass and the net force on the 5 kilogram mass. For the 10 kilogram mass, the only force acting on it is tension, right? Yeah. But we don't really know what that is. So I have the mass of the object, 10, times its acceleration is equal to the tension. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. For the 5 kilogram mass, there's two forces, and they're in opposite directions, so I'm going to subtract them. Tension's acting up, gravity's acting down. This gets to Mr. Spencer's question of dealing with the minus sign on the gravity. It's pointing down, right? That's why I have a minus sign there. So tension minus 5 times 9.8. This is the part where people are going to get screwed up. The minus 5a. Why do I have a minus sign in front of the F net? Because I know that this object's going to travel down. So I have to include a minus sign on there. I will show you another method in a second that gets around that, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay? So now I can plug in my tension that I found for the 10 kilogram mass. So I have minus 5a is equal to 10a minus 5 times 9.8. And I can solve for a. Minus 15a is equal to minus 5 times 9.8. What do we get for the acceleration? Uh, 3.27. 3.27? You used 10. No, I didn't. No, no you didn't. I got 3.33. No, no, I used 10. Ah! <laughs> the merit. 
<laughs> He's not even a prefect. He can't do that anymore. Oh. Oh. bullied on camera. Uh, <laughs> shots fired. All right. So the acceleration is 3.27 meters per second squared. That means that the 5 kilogram mass is falling at 3.27 meters per second squared, <laughs> and the 10 kilogram mass is sliding. That was still really funny. I'm the 10 kilogram sure mass. Like, keep roasting. Like, uh, I'm not going to keep roasting them with the camera on. Okay? That, 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 leaves, uh, that leaves visual evidence. Yeah. All right? 10 kilogram <laughs> mass is moving to the right at 3.27 meters per second squared. Maybe that's the reason you don't have cameras. That's probably a good reason, right? Is everybody okay? This method feels weird the first couple times you do it. I have an easier method for taking care of these guys. I have an easier method. I'm going to lift these two objects and I'm going to put them on a frictionless table. So I have my 10 kilogram mass. There's the string. There's the 5 kilogram mass. Okay? And I'm going to put a box around it. I am only interested in the forces that affect the box. I am only interested in the forces that try to move the system one way or the other. What's the only force trying to move the system? Gravity. The force of gravity on which block? The five kilogram block. So this is the force of gravity, which is five times 9.8, correct? Yeah. So that's the only force in my problem, correct? So that means that it's the net force, correct? Yeah. So the net force is equal to 5 times 9.8. That must be equal to the mass times the acceleration of everything inside the box. How much mass do we have inside the box? 15. 15. So 15 kilograms times the acceleration. 5 times 9.8. What's the acceleration? 3.27. Is everybody okay with that? The tension is inside the box, and I'm only worried about forces affecting the box. The big box, the dotted line box. The tension's inside. I don't care about it. So you want the forces outside of the box? Mm-hmm. The forces that are trying to directly move the system. And the only force that's trying to directly move the system is gravity. Next chapter, we're going to incorporate friction. So those that have had physics before, what direction would the friction be? Opposite The opposite direction. So now it would be the force of gravity minus the friction, but we still have the mass of the system. Everybody okay? All right. So... Let's move forward a little bit. I'd like to do two <coughs> more examples before we wrap up the day. <clears throat> Are we doing friction in this chapter? Friction is next chapter. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Friction is okay. So, in this problem, We're going to have force 1 is 60 newtons, and it's at an angle of 25 degrees. Force 2, oh, no, I already, I already screwed, oh god, Morty, this should have been 50 newtons, I'm sorry, oh god, I'm sorry, that should have been 50 newtons. Force 2 is 60 newtons, and this is at an angle of 30 degrees. All right, so F1, 50 newtons, 25 degrees. F2, 60 newtons, and 30 degrees. Find F3. Find some third force to make F net equal to zero. So you're going to add a third force that is going to make the total force in this problem zero. Okay? That means that you are looking for F net X equals zero and F net Y equals zero. I'm going to turn you guys loose to try that and then we'll talk about it. <clears throat> 
Give that the old college try. I'm going to put my tissue away so that, that way I can use that when I need to do more lectures. Liz is here, Igor is here, Natasha, Jimmy, Bill, Jean, Bella, Ben, Michael, Maria, Spencer, Tolman, Richard, Matt, and Sarah. You can do more than me right now. Those forces are vectors, so what's the first thing you should do to them? Find the x and y components. Very good. Shoot. That's not a good sign. But it wasn't me this time. <laughs> okay, good. Two decimal places. Okay. Hopefully everybody can break those down into components effectively. In the y direction, I have 21.13 and 30, so that means I've got 51.13. So this is the sum of F1 and F2. So what must F3 be equal to to cancel all this out? 6.64 i hat. Minus 51.13 j hat, and that's our answer in newtons. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> Was everybody able to break it down into components effectively? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then you got an overall F1 plus F2 
In the x direction, negative 6.64. In the y direction, 51.13. So that means that the x must be 6.64. The y must be negative 51.13. Can you put that into a, like, you make that into a vector? Yeah. Do you want me to make that into a vector? Well, I do. Like, can you? you? If I asked for the answer in unit vector notation, you would leave it as is. But if you wanted it in vector notation, yes, you okay. would then put it in vector. Can you do that real quick just to make sure? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. No problem. So there's the 6.64. Then we need negative 51.13. Connect the starting and ending points. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what you get for the hypotenuse? 51.43. 51.43. That looks about right. Newtons. At what's the angle? 82.6 degrees. 82.6 degrees. What of what? Uh, south of east. South, south of west. South of east. 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 South of east. Right? East. We okay there? Okay, I think this is a good stopping point for today, so just to recap a couple of things. I will be giving extra help Thursday night, 7.30 to 9 or 9.30, okay, so tomorrow night, 7.30 to 9. Your test on Chapter 4 is Friday. We're going to continue with Chapter 5 next week. You guys have to make a decision. All right, I'm giving you guys the power. Sorry, they're making the decision for everybody. Do you guys want one test on five and six combined? It's all forces. It's all forces. Chapter six is just friction. Do you want one combined test, or do you want me to squeeze in a test on chapter five and a test on chapter six? Combined. One combined. Combined. No, separate. separate. Oh, separate. separate. Two combined. tests is two opportunities to raise your test average. Yeah, Spencer and I both need that. Yeah, but if you if you do it, if none you of them do. So I see two forms of that. Yeah, I can drop less hard. Like honestly, but if it's they don't combined, care. Combined, it's like all the same. Combined. For no reason. For Spencer, I'm doing individual. Individual just a combined. Individual. If we do it individual, then you guys are going to have a test next Friday. Combine. Wait, guys, Why would it be otherwise? I don't want to cry. It's what all the other ones? Thing, except some of the what do you guys think? The following Friday show. is the last day of the test. Yes. 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 But I need to take more tests. It's it's more or just do better than one test. I'm planning on doing that on both. You can have your cake and eat it. It would just be its own longer point test. It would be longer. Combine. No. Same line. You're hurting yourself. I don't even have a combine. What? You want to do a combined? Yes. 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 If we do separate, here's the problem. Here's the problem. If we do separate, then that means I'm going to finish this up on Monday. Tuesday, I'll give you guys time to work on these problems. But then Wednesday, Thursday next week, I've got to start the new material, so it's going to be just like this week. You guys will take your test on Friday on Chapter 5 next week, and then the following week, you guys will take the Chapter 6 test on Friday. That's a test every Friday for the next three weeks. Goodbye. It's your call. Couldn't you do one that more points? It would be that final Friday before exams. Guys, the test would be shorter. No, it wouldn't necessarily be harder. It's all the same material. Do not do it like that. I have one challenge. You're not wrong. I know, that's why. You can also If you've been on the phone, you can do the rest Yes. No. Alright, let's take a vote. Let's take a vote. I don't know it. I don't know it. Do you want me to do the one? If you only do the one, it'll be the last day before exam, so it'll be that Friday. November 10th. Yes. Are we getting all this right? Yeah. Alright, let's take a vote. You can only vote once, so just making sure I had 12, I had 15 people. Oh, okay. uh, Alright, who wants a combined test? One, two, three, four. Yeah. Hands high. Hands high. Richard, 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 Richard,
So that means we're going to do a combined test on November 10th on Chapter 5 and 6 together. It's all forces, so they actually fit together very, very nicely. Okay? Wasserman, hit the red button for me, please. You trust me? No. 